Well, welcome back to beautiful and lush Harrodsburg, Kentucky. I just drove this 2018 Tiffin Allegro bus all the way from California to Kentucky on a 2,500 mile test drive and inspection, which it passed with flying colors. No sooner did I get this delivered here than Doug Sewell went ahead and threw me a curveball like he's known to do and asked me if maybe I had time to do one more inspection for him. And luckily I did bring a few tools with me. And most importantly, a flashlight. Why you would imagine it would be another Tiffin considering he has one there and there and of course that one. Or this one. If you followed my channel for just a little bit, you also understand that Doug Sewell has a strong affinity for the beauty and quality of Newmar coaches. But we're not going to do that Dutch star, okay? It's going to be this beautiful 2008 King Air from Newmar. I think it's the first generation King Air that they put out. Now it looks beautiful and like it doesn't need an inspection, but like any inspection we do together, we'll go ahead and get on the roof and do an inspection. And we'll see what the roof of this 2008 King Air look like. I think the spoiler is going to be, because I haven't been up there yet, there won't be too much difference between this and the 2023 as far as the construction method goes. Once we're done on the roof, I'll go ahead and take you inside. We'll do a quick little walkthrough on the inside of it. But after I'm done with the inspection, that way I know what I'm talking about. But of course, like most of my roof inspections, I do recommend that we put the slide out rooms out first. That way we can look on top of the slide out rooms themselves. That'll give us a good opportunity to check the seals on the outside and look underneath for any sort of uh, obvious damage or rot. And then we'll check all the ceilings all the way around the entire fascia. And while rotten floors isn't too common on a Newmar product, we do want to inspect and make sure. And now it's my understanding this one was stored indoors. Maybe that's why it looks so good. Also keep track of the uh, fascia on the outside. Check all the sealants around that. These are the bulb seals. That's the wiper seal. Really, this thing looks like it just left the factory. Now, although I brought some tools with me, I definitely didn't bring my ladder with me. But luckily, this is Doug's shop and he has ladders too. Because you'll find on most luxury RVs, they don't like to put a ladder on the back of them. So let's go ahead and climb up the ladder here. Might as well take a look at the roof of this slide out because it's right here. This is a rubber membrane roof, but it does have a pitch on it. And all the sealant looks intact here. We look really good for 2008. That's 15 years ago. One thing you might notice on this slide out it has this weird looking uh, square block here. These are the slide out locks. These were commonly used by Newmar. Up until just a few years ago where they switched to a fully mechanical one that is incorporated into the roof of the slide out. And even though they're usually called travel locks, their purpose isn't really a safety device. It's to keep the uh, fascia right there in contact with the seal over here as it's driving down the road so it doesn't open up a little bit in uh, uneven terrain especially in the rain and while it is a membrane roof on the slide out roofs it is a one-piece gel coat fiberglass roof on top all right this is the first time i've gone in here i haven't looked at this yet it's an unbelievably beautiful summer day here in kentucky but i did already notice something right down here as I was getting up, that screw is loose on this deflector for the awning on this side. I'll make a note of that, but then I'm gonna head to the back and we'll start there. All right, as we start back here, we'll find the rear cap. This is a gel coat fiberglass molded rear cap to meet the gel coat fiberglass molded roof. There's a seam right there. The hardware that uh, secures the roof to the framing underneath is gonna be underneath this tape but this tape itself is just a diverter. It's a, not a turn of bond, but it is a roof repair tape used as a flashing. But I surprisingly don't see anything wrong with it. If we look at the rear cap, I do see a little bit of stress cracks everywhere. And if I look at the spoiler right here, looks like maybe at some point it hit a branch of a tree. See a little bit more stress cracks right there too. But this was stored indoors, they said, so I'm not seeing a lot of uh, paint peeling at all. If we look over the back here, man, that's just clean looking. 
Same down the side. We'll look at this molding right there, make sure it's not all wavy where it might have come loose. But I'm not seeing anything wrong there. Now, one thing you might notice on a Numar is that they don't have a, a gutter like you normally see on an RV. They've made it a hidden gutter on the roof. So the water can go underneath the deflectors here. And there's a channel in this aluminum extrusion that becomes the gutter. Their basin catches right there. Looks like a shower drain. And that'll then drain it down to the ground through uh, some plumbing. That eliminates the need to put any sort of condensate drains for the AC units. So you don't have to worry about water in the ceiling on issues like that. However, that also means you need to get on the roof at least once a year and inspect your drains and make sure these aren't clogged up. Uh, they're just kind of like sealed in place. You can pull them up and clean it all out. There's four of them, two on each side, one at the rear, one at the front on both sides. Now, speaking of those deflectors, these are probably some of the most beefy, largest deflectors I've ever seen. I think they went away from doing these. Uh, it does make inspecting the uh, awning mounts over here a little bit more difficult. They're just using Dicor right here. Looks like the sealant's cracking a little bit. And Dicor self-leveling lap sealant is what the factory is going to be using on this roof. Uh, it is fiberglass safe. It can be used on fiberglass. You just can't mix silicone sealant with Dicor sealants. And while I'm calling this awning mount, this is uh, really de decorative. This is fiberglass. There's no awnings on the driver's side. The awnings are going to be on the passenger side there. This just These over here just balance out the look of the driver's side for the roof line. All right, well, moving forward, we'll see the skylight right here. I'm going to inspect the base to make sure it's not cracked anywhere. No screws are poking out and no signs of sealant failure. Come over here to this fantastic vent. I'll already assume there's a rear bathroom here because uh, no other reason to have a fantastic vent right here on the roof. Sealant looks good. I've showed that in a number of videos that the uh, plastic flange on some of these uh, fantastic vents like to crack, so it's always a good, good idea to look at the flange. But I'm not seeing any sort of damage there. And it's always good to kind of walk next to all these components because the roof will flex a little bit and you'll see uh, the sealant crack or, or uh, gap open up if, if it is loose. On the ACs, again, we're just going to lean against it, make sure that it's not loose. These bolt down from above. And so this can be quite problematic, and we do want to make sure those don't get loose. And yet it's dirty. Uh, this could probably use a good wash and wax. It is a fiberglass material. It should be washed and waxed, just like uh, the sidewalls on the RV should be. Uh, a simple wash and wax is all I recommend. You don't have to do a ceramic coating or a paste wax and hand buff it. Now, if you've followed any of my uh, Newmar roof inspections, you'll know that I talk about their sewer vent caps that they use. And uh, they're kind of um, poor quality and not something they should be putting on an expensive luxury RV. These are like $3. A nicer one is like $5. I don't know why they just don't use the nicer ones. But I could already see that one was going to fall apart. I already knew that because I could see that one right there. As we make our way forward, we'll come to the first slide-out room here. This is why it's nice to have the slide-out room out. These are Girard slide-out toppers. This still has the uh, stitching on the fabric panels and it's normal for that stitching to fail. So we do want to make a note that the stitching has failed. The fabric's fine, it's just the stitching. As far as the slide out topper goes, it's gonna be fine. Their main purpose isn't to keep water off of here, just keep debris off of it. But we do want to be aware that the stitching right there has failed. But while we're here, we might as well peer over, take a look at the roof of it, make sure there's no obvious damage. Looks like there might be a little bit of a slice right there. I recommend that we do something about that. Just a little bit of tape is all it's gonna require. But other than that, it looks pretty good. Seals look good all the way down. And this gutter over here, we're all clear out. Not seeing any real issues right there. We have another fantastic vent right here. We'll do the same thing again. Look for the sealant failing, cracks in the plastic. Have another sewer vent right here. Looks like maybe somebody replaced the uh, vent cap because that one looks newer. So that's a nice bright white. But the base is probably just as brittle as the uh, other ones that would look like this because you can see, yeah, I can see the cracking in the plastic on this one. So I'd recommend uh, three new sewer vents. Uh, radio antenna, it's very common for the mast to break on these. Extremely common. You don't have to replace the whole base, just put a new mast on. 
Come over to this side. We got a slide out on here because there are four slide outs on this we already saw. Now this stitching on this side isn't failing. And we already looked at the roof of this slide out. This is going to be a pre-wire likely for solar. There's no solar on this roof. It wasn't very common in 2008. Uh, let's see. All right, so there's two awnings on this. That's good to know. Luckily, I had the foresight to bring the awning remote with me. All right, that's as far as I feel safe to run it out without hitting Doug's beautiful, elegant lady, Liberty bus conversion. I don't want to be responsible for damaging that. And since stitching was something of an issue on the slide out toppers, we'll make sure we take a look at the stitching on these. But all that seems pretty good. I'm not seeing any issue with that. My guess is that the owner didn't even run these out in the last few years. Just a little bit of debris right there. Not too bad. All right, let me get these put away. If I was thinking, I would have uh, saved this for last, but there's a slide out room under here I still need to inspect. All right, we got those closed up again. This is just going to be the wiring for those awnings. I mean, the gland's loose, but I don't see any issue with it. We're going to inspect the uh, awning mounts here. A little bit of cracking, a little bit of flexing, but nothing I'm too worried about. Like I said, I don't normally see these covers on those uh, awning mounts. That's like 300 pounds of extra weight. That's really weird. Another broken, t uh, another broken radio antenna. We've got the second roof AC here. Check and make sure it's not loose. Doesn't seem to be. Big surprise, the wind sensor for the Gerard awning is broken. <laughs> uh, let's see. That seems really loose right there. All right, so we're missing the hardware there. Might be riveted. Might be a better choice than tech screws, it looks like. Look over here. Stitching on this side is also failing. And failing, so... Ooh, there's something else going on right that edge there too well that's going to be a lot more serious than the other one because the stitching right there is failing so the uh, plastic insert that holds the fabric in the uh, slat the metal slat there is being pulled out of the fabric so that's definitely not what we want to see this failure will allow water to puddle up here really well and then you'll have a few gallons of water that'll want to go straight into the roof of the slide out there and that'll start to overpower the bulb sills right there they aren't they're just supposed to redirect water not be underwater but while we're here go ahead and take a look at the roof they look pretty good there see it looks really good so i would definitely recommend new fabric on that awning there and i feel bad because replacing Gerard slide out topper fabrics is not one of my favorite things to do. It's a little bit dangerous. So that means Doug guys are going to have to do it. I feel bad. Sorry guys. Right. Updated my notes there. Come to the uh, third fantastic event. I would definitely want to have some covers on these. It's one of the first upgrades almost any RV should have. Surprised they didn't come with it from the factory. But see, it looks good. I don't see any cracking on the base. We're doing fantastic. This would have been top of the line, track vision, uh, R6, satellite TV antenna. Uh, these are pretty much obsolete at this point too. But I wouldn't remove this unless you were replacing it with something different. Otherwise, it's holding the place for all the holes in the roof. And it's not causing any damage. The third AC will come up to here. We'll look to it. And I did have the ACs running, and now you can kind of see that condensate how it just comes off it'll just go over here into the gutter and then go down down the sidewall so you don't have to have crazy uh plumbing underneath the acs but we did want to check and make sure it's not loose we have a cb antenna right there we look fine there's our uh, manufacturer solar panel gimmick this is a battery maintainer for the chassis battery I'm not a big fan of these this just means they have solar on it but it's just going to maintain a fully charged battery not charge a dead battery and you're definitely not gonna go off grid with this eight watt panel all right i'll come over to this side got a broken tv antenna on the bat wing should have another one of these back there that one's gone uh, this is a discontinued tv antenna also this is a power lift one with a gas strut on it 
See that gas strut's destroyed, all covered in rust. These had were problematic from the get-go. If it were me, I would probably just change out the TV antenna head itself because those are still available and still used, and just keep it in the down position. It'll be fine. Otherwise, when you take this off, there's actually a pretty big hole underneath right here where a lot of the guts go through the roof. You have to fill that hole and then put a new TV antenna on. And 90% of the time, your TV antenna in the down position is going to get all the channels you're going to get anyways. All right. That just leaves the four slide out. So the stitching's failing on that too. Pretty much would have guaranteed that. We'll look on top here. One more look on the roof of this slide out. Not see any issues. I don't always point it out. But the manufacturers like to use foam seal as a uh, flashing between the awnings and the sidewall to help redirect water. Usually just use some silicone to uh, seal the gaps between that. You'll see the same thing happens over here on the window or the uh, entry door awning. They have a foam gasket that's come loose there in the wind and probably needs to be sealed back down this black paint's pretty hot <laughs> all right we'll make a note of that it's not anything uh other than to redirect water so that water doesn't get between the sidewall here and when you're walking in the front door that way when the awning's out in the training the water's not going to go in between and get on top of your head still all right, that'll just bring us to the uh, where the front cap meets the uh, roof. Like I said, I do like to um, walk these seams and make sure that it's not loose. I don't see any damage to the uh, the tape up here. We'll notate that there's a little bit of cracking on that awning foot. This is a solid molded fiberglass front cap. Uh, you can walk here just fine. You can put some weight right here, but don't walk out on top of the roof right there. We'll just carefully lean over and take a look without burning ourselves on this hot black paint. Whew, that's got to be 160 degrees. <laughs> Look pretty good there. Look on top of the windshield to make sure that it's not popping out of the corners. I didn't point it out. We got our GPS antenna, satellite radio antenna. Uh, I don't know. Looks like the uh, die core sealant could probably be resealed there yeah all right well we did find a number of things wrong with this 2008 king air it's not surprising it is 15 years old but it was built very well 15 years ago most of the issues are just going to be uh the sewer vents some sealant needs to be touched up and of course the biggest item is going to be the uh, fabric on the slide out awnings and there are a few broken antennas but nothing too uh, catastrophic or concerning so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get off the roof, I'm going to do my inspection on the inside. Once I'm all done, uh, I'll take you through the inside, we'll take a look at it real fast when I know how it all works. Alright guys, I am done with the inspection on this 2008 King Air, and Doug made a mistake. When I asked him for permission to take a look at this 2008 King Air, he told me to point out things that I found wrong with it and let everybody know what I found. I won't beat him up too bad on this, but it is a 2008, so I was bound to find something wrong with it, no matter how beautiful it does look. So on the front right here, there is a broken VORAD sensor. I think he does know about that because he drove it over here. Uh, there's nothing wrong with the generator. Generator fired up, worked great. It has a 12.5 kW in it. Uh, about 3,200 hours, but otherwise, really, really quiet, running great, ran everything. And while the jacks do work, it didn't work in automatic mode, but I think it's just the touchpad. Again, a very simple problem. Not too worried about that one. The most obvious problems I found when I first looked at it is this stainless steel panel on the step is loose. And when you open up the entry door, <laughs> there is no screen door. And I think Doug's aware of that one too. But since I have the slide out rooms in right now, uh, I'm gonna go through the outside really fast with you guys so I don't have to hit my head on the slide out rooms. It's still very, very similar to what you're gonna see on a modern King Air, except for having this Norcold compressor driven refrigerator freezer in the basement. It'll be a more modern thematic one probably. 
This one's kind of fun. They have suicide doors for the compartment doors here. Uh, here's another thing. Those power basement sliders. They're not working. Likely a blown fuse. Pretty common problem. I'm not too worried about that either, but they have two of them. And another set of suicide doors back here. One's going to be for the brand new Sony television. This is a smart one. Looks like somebody upgraded. And luckily this basement slider is just a manual slider. Otherwise, I would probably recommend taking down the uh, L LED aftermarket light strip there that's hanging. I didn't even notice it until I ran the slide out rooms in, but there is an issue with the slide out topper right up there. That's not the fabric. The lead rail that goes against the sidewall on the slide out room, it's a little bit loose up there. So, so where it mounts to the slide out room sidewall, it's coming loose. I don't know, it's hard to see with the glare from the sun. But maybe look straight up at it, you guys can see the gap up there. Not a huge deal either. It just needs to be screwed back down again. On this King Air, the house batteries are going to be located back here rather than in the driver's side front compartment like they, a modern one would be. It is on a pull-out uh, tray. It's very heavy. You'll just have to trust me that it does work. Before the, they moved them up front, they put them on the in-between models on a big old sliding tray right here. That was also a very heavy tray. Speaking of the driver's side, surprisingly, almost every Newmar I ever see, this engine grill is loose somewhere, but this one wasn't loose. That's pretty impressive. And for whatever reason, Newmar had in their mind that suicide doors were the way to go this model year. But really, not too much different than what you're gonna see on a modern King Air. Even has the uh, power cord reel right there. This window awning arm came loose from the sidewall there. Very easy fix there still. And while I'm not a huge fan of how these compartment doors open in the barn door style with opposing hinges like this, I will point out that it doesn't have that complicated open and drop that the new Newmars are going to have. Not that those have had problems, it's just sometimes engineers just engineer a little too hard. But you can see those basement sliders are on this side too. Again, they're not working, but we already know about that. And instead of having the batteries right here, you do have a another storage uh, bin here. So that's nice. I think I'd rather have this storage area rather than batteries. But my favorite feature is right up front here. Even though a modern King Air is going to look very, very similar to this, this generator slide, it only works if the uh, ignition switch is on. But you can operate this without having the ignition switch on. As a tech, I appreciate that. All too often, I'm at this point, try to operate it, and I have to go all the way inside, put the key on, then come all the way back outside again. But other than that, really, this is a nice King Air. But now we're going to go ahead and take a look on the inside. I'll try to be kind to you, Doug. But let's go ahead and go inside now. I do have the slide out rooms in. So I do want you guys to see that there is a decent walkway down the middle right there. It is a little bit tight behind the driver's seat right there. But otherwise, it is a very decent walking path. It only gets a little bit tight right here. There's a power table, and then it's going to be a little bit tight right there. Make it all the way back to the bedroom. You can hop over the bed to get to the rear bathroom, but why would you do that? Because you have a mid-coach bath right there. It's one of the bigger mid-coach baths I've seen as of late. But let me go ahead and get these slide-out rooms out. I missed that sound. I haven't heard that in a while. All right, let me get the other three out. Okay, that's all four of them out. 
and I'm pretty excited to show this coach to you guys. Now before we get started on the tour and I get a little bit too lost in the weeds explaining things or pointing out problems, I do want to point out one important thing as a 2008. This has upholstery on it that's not going to fall apart. This predates the upholstery problem that was plaguing Tiffin, Newmar, Winnebago, Forest River, and Thor. So this is the original material, and man, does that look good on the, all the captain's chairs and the sofas and even the dinette booth over there. So I'll leave with good news. The biggest deficiency that I'm going to show you before we get started and I lose the light is that a number of the windows do have... Uh, hazing or moisture in the dual panes right there. It's not an uncommon problem in RVs. Even uh, modern King Airs and London Airs can have that problem. Doug's assured me he's gonna go ahead and get that taken care of, but he did wanna make sure that I pointed it out so if you guys see it in the video, you don't say, hey, why didn't you tell me about the uh, cloudy windows? I'm telling you. But now that being said, this is a fairly modern floor plan that is on this uh, motorhome. That is real porcelain tile throughout the entire living room salon area. It does have carpet in the bedroom, but it does still have carpet on the slide out room right there and a little bit in the driver's compartment. It's not uncommon to see. Like we already saw, it does have the automatic hydraulic HWH leveling on it. I think the touchpad's bad because it's not registering the uh, auto button work, but the rest of the system's working fine, so I think it's just a bad controller. It does have the Hadley air suspension system on it. That's working great. Has a power toll window, uh, the Vorad adaptive cruise control, which Doug says he's going to get working too. Continue with the tour in the dash area. It has the two screens right here for the backup camera, the GPS, and even the TripTech computer is built in. And naturally, the passenger has their own monitor right there for the GPS. It does have an over the road TV, so the passenger can watch TV driving down the road. Since the main living room TV is right there, and with the side out room in, you won't be able to actually see the TV. But while we're looking up here, you can see the cabinetry right here is very similar to what you're going to find on a modern King Air uh, with its uh, faux brush surface like that. Uh, it might be just a little bit more gray, white, or a darker color instead of a, a cherry color. This is going to be the standard Numar setup. Instead of having the silver leaf display on it, it has our EPLEX system on it. That system's actually working 100%. And there's still another control in the bedroom right there. Again, I think I've covered this in the videos before. I'm not a huge fan of uh, having the control center right above the driver's seat right there. As we move behind the driver's seat on the driver's side front slide out, we do find it does have that integrated sofa to the dinette. Again, like I said, the fabric's in wonderful shape. This does turn into a bed, and it's bigger than you think it would be because it goes underneath that cushion too. And it's just a standard hide a bed, which I would say is pretty close to a big fool or a small queen. And then attached to the sofa is going to be the dinette table. Now, it'd be very difficult to sit right there, but this has a power feature to it so we can extend the table. It does that so that when the slide out room's in, that table can go completely back out of the way and get that aisle down the middle that I already pointed out. And this has a solid surface Corian countertop with a uh, color band on the uh, bull nose edge right there. The uh, duct tape is uh, no extra charge for that. I think the uh, trim underneath right there is just a little bit loose so that'll be addressed too. Closing that slide out will be the galley slide out. It has its own love seat right here. Now this also turns into a bed. It's just a jackknife sofa. Uh, I think it'll be very tight if you try to do both beds at the same time. Whoo! That's some pretty good engineering right there. But they did manage to make two beds in the living room area right here so it does work. Behind that is going to be the galley area on the slide out. I always love it when the manufacturers incorporate multi-height to a countertop. Just those little ledges allow you to differentiate your work areas from your storage areas and give you a lot more working space too. But this does have a dual electric stove top on it. Now this is a radiant stove top. It's not an induction stove top. So you don't have to have any special cookware for that. Above is going to just be a GE profile, a convection of a microwave. Uh, and then below, this does have a Fisher Pykel drawer dishwasher. Now this one's broken, and usually when I ever do an uh, inspection, I'll take the uh, agitator off. If I can spin this by hand, I know I can run the dishwasher, but this one's seized in place because that motor's probably failed and needs to be replaced. So that's uh, one of those tests I always do on an inspection. 
Before we move to the sink, I will point out the backsplash does have matching floor tiles on it, but still has porcelain tiles. It's a pretty nice color banding on there. Nothing too over the top or extravagant. It does have two asymmetrical under countertop mounted stainless steel sinks on it, so that means we can keep one sink cover on and use this side or put this sink cover back on and still have a small working sink right there with extra countertop space. Now behind the kitchen area is going to be the residential refrigerator. Uh, this is just a Maytag refrigerator on top. Nice feature, it does have water and ice in the door and then it has a freezer drawer down below. It still comes with that Newmar patented uh, refrigerator lock. They've been using that and they still use that to this day. I'm not too big of a fan where they put the entertainment center, which is going to be up high right there with a home theater system and DVD player. A lot of this is pretty obsolete now anyway, so you can just have your smart controller up there and just use a uh, Wi-Fi connection anyways. Now before we go back into the bathroom right there, hidden behind here is going to be the laundry center, so you don't have to listen to this in your bedroom. Put the washers on the bottom, dryers up on top, and those are working pretty good. Now across from there is going to be the mid-coach bathroom, like I already pointed out. This is actually a big uh, mid-coach bathroom. It does have the electric toilet on it. But this is a residential size uh, porcelain toilet, so it's pretty comfortable. Nice Korean countertop right here. It's a little bit fatter as far as an edge goes, and it has a, a double lip. So there's a lip here. This might be hard to see. And then another lip right there to help kind of control messes. Mirrored medicine cabinet above, and just like most of the new Mars, even the modern ones, the electrical center is still going to be in this front mid-coach bathroom area. I'll go past the door here. This is where we do return to carpet. The carpet is a little bit dirty. It does need to be cleaned, but those are going to be the other two slide-outs. So this is a king size bed. It is a sleep number or a air mattress on it for dual chamber and there is storage underneath. Now one thing I did forget to point out on all this uh, tile work right here, because yes, there is the uh, Oasis hydronic heater on there. It does have those three roof AC heat pumps, but hidden behind right here, it does have heated tile flooring and it's two zones. So one for the front zone and then one right back there for the back zone of the uh, galley salon area. And I don't always point it out on uh, these videos, but it does have a safe under the bed and it does have that storage I was telling you about. But I'm also jealous about having a king size bed. Even the headboard on this is a nice padded vinyl. I like that. No window that you have to struggle with your pillows against. Now across from there is gonna be the four slide out room. That's where you're gonna find the uh, dresser. Uh, Bose Wave Radio with CD player on it. it does have that Corian countertop material in here as a dresser. There's that other Eplex uh, screen so you can control everything from the bedroom here. I actually like this one better than the one up front. Again, on a modern uh, King Air, you'll have a silver leaf display right about here in the bedroom anyway. So very, very similar. But now we can make our way back to the uh, rear master bathroom or full bathroom. And in the full bathroom right here, there's going to be two big differences between a 2008 first generation King Air and a modern King Air. This is the biggest different area. The first thing that we'll notice is that it does have this step up right there for the engine cover. On modern ones, that step platform comes all the way back to here. So right at the pocket door, you'd be stepping up. And because they did that, that would cut into ceiling space back here. On modern King Air, the ceiling right here is gonna be raised with a uh, molded fiberglass roof. It creates a barrel arch in the bathroom area back here, so you get more head space. That being said, there's still a pretty good layout for the rear main bathroom. You'll notice we did switch back to that porcelain tile right here. This tile is also heated, it has a macerating toilet back here. Across from the toilet will be the vanity. It has a half vessel sink. I kind of like that. It doesn't jut out really high off the countertop like a lot of those bowl sinks do. And it's not a clear glass bowl that shows all the water spots that uh, you know you can never get rid of. Above it does have a dual mirrored medicine cabinet. Now we're missing a, a nut on one of those sockets there. And I think one of the bulbs is uh, probably out of it. Uh, across from there it has its own little uh, dresser. Now the shower is a pretty decent sized corner shower right here. But the radius door does have the flip down seat in there. 
It is a residential size shower with solid surface Corian shower wall. Same tiled accent from the backsplash in the kitchen area. And the step up is a pretty manageable, I uh, call it about eight inches. I'm six foot, so as I step up into here, uh, I didn't have to duck my head under here, but if I do step out, I didn't have to duck either. Just have to watch my head coming in and out a little bit. Now, that being said, this radius shower door right here is a pretty common failure on a lot of RVs, including Monaco products, and this one has failed too. You can see the glass is separated from the uh, track or the uh, frame right above. And it took me a while to figure out how to fix these things. I also tried to put clear silicone, crimp the edges a little bit harder. But what I found is uh, it was a design flaw from the manufacturer that built the shower door. Uh, these rollers right here, they're offset from the, uh, from the vertical frame members right here. It doesn't seem like they're that far removed from where the, uh, the load bearing surface should be because they're just on the outside edge of it. But because the weight of this glass panel door is being uh, carried by this roller, it becomes the fulcrum of this lever trying to pull the uh, frame out from the glass. All I normally do is I take this door off. Shouldn't give away all my secrets. I lay it on the bed because the bed's a pretty good working area. Uh, it keeps the glass from breaking too. Uh, take these rollers off and then I just drill the a new hole for it right above this frame member right here. Obviously you still have to rebuild the door and put it all back together, but once the roller is in line with this frame right here, now this metal is carrying the weight of it, not this crimp point on the uh, glass that's not going to carry that load very well. Uh, I've found that to be the best repair. You might have, you'll have a hole on either side, but it's not going to be visible. And once you put the uh, roller right in there, I have found that to be a pretty lasting repair. Like I said, this isn't just Newmar. Uh, a lot of manufacturers use this shower door, and so far that's been the best repair I've found. And then once that's fixed, you can get the, that gap closed up. And that'll leave the tour right here with the uh, closet. Now it has the bedroom closet right here, uh, the built-in shoe caddy, adjustable racking, and even the cedar line closet. It's pretty standard even for a modern King Air. Uh, unfortunately, this handle did break off. It's just double-sided tape, and I think I saw it in the drawer right there. And in the basement is a complete brand new one to replace it with. But it does have some more dressing space right here. Again, with soft clothes features on it. So thanks for joining me on this tour of this first-generation 2008 Newmar King Air. I'm sorry if the tour was a little bit clunky and I was a little bit long-winded. I was really excited to share it with you guys. Let me see if I can't track down Doug and find out the information if anybody's interested in this motorhome. All right, Doug, you picked this up from Arkansas. Drove it here yourself, right? So, absolutely. There's a pre-def unit. This is the first year. I don't know if people know. I didn't figure it out. It took me, I have an 06 Essex and I thought the King Air was the top in 06 the 06 Essex was the the top but in 08 this is a 40th the Newmar's 40th anniversary and this is the first year of the King Air and to be honest with you James I haven't seen too many things different on this coach than what you'd find on a 15 or a 16. Maybe you know a lot a of the bit. styling inside I already showed them it's very very similar. Yeah so I was very thrilled. Maybe the lighting maybe the the, the control is a little bit different yep, yep. but the overall construction is nearly identical even the look of it on the outside, exactly. I can't even, like, the headlights are a bit different. Well, the funny thing is when they sent me a picture of it, I thought they made a mistake. I said, <laughs> I called them, I said, I thought you said it was an 08 King Air. This thing looks like a 15 or a 16 King Air. So uh, I, what you have in front of you, I think it's an amazing coach. It drove awesome. Uh, that 600 horsepower. Uh, so it does have 600. 600 those ISX. Are, those are noticeably fast oh, and powerful. Gosh, yeah, I, it so you was, said that it did have a cruise control issue? I have a, the Vorad. I got a crack in the Right, Vorad it has the adaptive system. cruise control on yep. it. So that we're going to take care of that and all the other things that you noted in your inspections. So, right. Yep. I took everybody through it already. Yep. So let's get to how many. I didn't check the mileage on it. What was the mileage? Mileage is ju I actually rolled it over 70,000 coming here back to Kentucky. It's right. like 500 miles. All right. And the paint on the outside looks like it's brand new just off the factory. So this is stored indoors. Absolutely stored indoors. You can really tell. We went ahead and stuck two brand new 365 Michelins on the front because my rule of thumb is five years on steers, 
seven years on on drives and ten years on tags. Okay, uh, James. So we went ahead and put tires on it. Uh, it's got newer battery. I think new batteries on it. Uh, full service and fixing everything you find wrong with it. This is a great coach. 08 model, seventy thousand miles. All right, let's get down to brass tacks, Doug. Yes, what are you asking for this? This coach is 220. It's an 08 King Air, what, 4561 floor plan. Uh-huh. 229 to be the next owner of this one. 229. All on the website, too, James. Sorry right. to interrupt you. Yeah. The website, SewellMotorCoach.com. SewellMotorCoach.com. I'll put the information down right there. If you want to or have any questions about this, just go ahead and reach out to Doug or his uh, sales crew yep. uh, at Sewell, Sewell Motor Coach. Yeah, a lot of coach for the money, a ton of coach for the money. A ton of coach for the money, Bath yeah. Bath and a half, too, and just all the goodies. All right, and pre-death. 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 Yep. Well, there's the information for you guys. I want to thank Doug Sewell with Sewell Motor Coach for uh, the hospitality. He always shows me here in Kentucky. That's a pretty nice uh, 2008 King Air that he found. It was fun to share it with you guys. If you have any questions about it, don't hesitate to reach out to Doug Sewell at SewellMotorCoach.com. I don't have a lot of answers about it. Hopefully I didn't upset Doug too much by pointing out everything wrong and he uh, asked me to come back again. We'll find out. But as I try to say repeatedly, I don't really think I'm much of a salesman, but I got to get home, guys. But I do appreciate you guys watching the channel and the videos I'm making. I do my absolute best to find something interesting or to share some pretty useful RV information that people might find useful sometime down the road. But I got a flight to catch. Thanks a lot for watching. <laughs> Bye. It does have the bedroom TV on this slide out room right there. And this is a little bit ever with a little bit better access for the entertainment center right in there and I think that Bose Wave Radio should have inputs to it in here somewhere. Very likely. Uh, yeah, it's got the auxiliary input on there. So, a rudimentary soundbar from 2008.